Welcome back, America. We have Senator Ted Cruz with us, good friend and great patriot. Senator Cruz, um, one thing that is being discussed in a very ambiguous way is um, the lack of action being taken by the Biden administration. These guys get up, they talk in very emotional and passionate ways that are that is really um, commendable. But what are they doing? I mean, uh, the $6 billion, okay, let's forget about the $6 billion. What about the $100 billion? Have they made any policy change to cut off Iran, the Palestinians, or any of our enemies? Th they haven't, and, and you're right. Talk is cheap. Uh, we had, after several days, Joe Biden finally came out with a clear statement of support for Israel without caveats in it. That was good. It was good that he got there, especially since it, his administration, day after day after day, had put out statements undermining Israel, calling for a ceasefire, calling for Israel not to engage in a military response and defend itself. But at the end of the day, talk's cheap. The question is action. And listen, this attack, the worst attack on Israel in over 50 years, a horrific terrorist attack, was funded by money that came from Joe Biden and the Biden administration. And the Biden administration, in two and a half years, has flowed over $50 billion to Iran. And Iran planned this attack. They funded this attack. They directed this attack. Now, the Democrats realized they had some exposure. So very quickly, a bunch of Democrats ran and said, OK, let's freeze the $6 billion, the ransom for the five Americans. So they got there. All right, that was obvious. Yes, of course. By the way, you and I had been saying the day it was announced, don't pay $6 billion in ransom because these monsters will take more Americans hostage, which is exactly what they've done. But $6 billion is just the tip of the iceberg. In addition to that, three weeks earlier, the Biden administration released $10 billion to Iran that was coming from Iraq. They need to stop that $10 billion. But beyond that, both of those are still tiny compared to the over $40 billion that Iran has made from oil sales. And, and, and Mark, when, when Joe Biden came into office, Iran was on its knees. Its economy was in shambles. And the reason is we have very tough sanctions on oil sales in place. I spent the entire Trump presidency urging President Trump to vigorously enforce those sanctions. And, and he did. And it crippled the Iranian economy. Well, what happened? Joe Biden came in and said, we're not going to enforce the sanctions. Today, Iran is selling 2 million barrels a day of oil, mostly to communist China. That is funding the regime. That's over $40 billion. And Joe Biden could end that tomorrow. So every Democrat who says we stand with Israel, great. Then cut off every single penny of funding to Iran who is funding these terrorist monsters. That's an excellent point. And why don't they put out a statement, these Democrats, saying... Stop allowing Iran to ship its oil to China, Venezuela, Syria, other enemies of our country. In other words, enforce yes. the existing sanctions. He won't enforce the existing sanctions. And so what I see, Ted Cruz, is the Democrats really don't want to be critical of Biden or, their, or his policies. And yet they, they say they stand in support of Israel. Do they not want to know, acknowledge, or fix what has taken place with respect to what we have done? Look, of course they don't want to know. We saw in recent weeks the story break. Rob Malley, who was the chief Iran person for the Biden administration, he was the one trying to negotiate yet another appeasement, yet another capitulation in a new Iranian nuclear deal. Rob Malley's been fired. His security clearance has been revoked. We don't know why, but he did something so egregious that even this White House revoked his security clearance. What we do know is that Rob Malley brought in three senior advisors, all of whom were Iranian operatives. They were spies. They were recruited by the Iranian government. They're Iranian Americans. They were reporting directly to the foreign minister of Iran. They were taking direction from the foreign minister of Iran. We have emails now where they express to the foreign minister of Iran their allegiance to Iran 
and they say, one of them says that it's his job to argue against anyone who says Iran should not have a nuclear weapons stockpile. Those three Iranian operatives were helping lead the Biden administration's policy on Iran, and one of them remains a chief of staff in a senior position in the Department of Defense, presumably with her security clearances still in place. It is shocking. And you know what? Senate Foreign Relations Committee hasn't held a single hearing on Iranian spies directing our Iranian policy while we're flooding billions of dollars that is funding Hamas while they're murdering over 1,200 Israelis. It is disgraceful, and any Democrat who wants to stop it needs to stand up and say, cut off the money and get rid of the Iranian spies. You've just described something that's as bad or worse than the Al Jahiz case. Yes. The media pay precious little attention to it. The Democrats don't want to touch it because it would demonstrate the outrageousness of this administration. Rebuilding, and I'll say it, the Iranian war machine, rebuilding the Palestinian terrorism machine, and we actually have people with allegiances to the Iranian Nazi regime negotiating on our side over nuclear weapons. We'll be right back. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.